So if you have your Bible, we're going to be journeying through Joshua through the next 21 days. And God, I, I really believe God is beginning. He, he's speaking to you already. As we learned even yesterday, come on, that, hey, we're getting ready to cross over. That, hey, hey, Moses is dead, but it's time for the Joshua to rise up in us. It, it, it's time for the, the warrior. It's time for the one that has been anointed to go conquer the very thing that God has promised. As, as, God told, as God told Joshua, hey, hey, the land is given to you. I have given you this land, but it's just not going to be released to you. You have to go occupy the land. My God, may this be the year where you begin to occupy the very things that God has spoken over your life, that's spoken over your family life. And, and for today, we're, we're going to dive into, we're going to dive into Joshua 2, and I'm I'm going to grab my notes right here real quick, and we're going to get into it. If you have your Bible, go ahead and turn to Joshua 2, and I'm going to be reading. I'm going to be reading from the ESV. Love this part. Uh, and we're going to be I'm going to be reading from the ESV, and actually, I'm, I'm, I got one scripture for you. I'm going to read one scripture, and I could even make it pass. I could even make it pass the first verse, and, and God begin to speak and it goes, family, in Joshua 2, verse 1, I'm reading from the ESV. It says, and Joshua, the son of Nun, sent two men secretly from Shittim as spies, saying, go view the land, especially Jericho. If you're taking notes right now, I, I want you to underline that. If you're able to take notes, if, if you're listening even later to the recording, hey, drop that down. Go view the land. So you see the context here, family, I, sometimes we can, when we get into the book of Joshua, we, we love reading about Jericho and we're going to get there as we're, we're walking and walking this uh, path out together. We're going to get there. We're going to see how they crossed over the Jordan river. And we, we're going to see when the walls came falling down. There's so much powerful things that happened in the book of Joshua. That's why actually it's one of my favorite books. I love the book of Joshua. But there's something powerful right here of where Israel is camped out at, Shittim. This is the last encampment that actually they've been in the wilderness for a mighty long time. <laughs> Generations have passed on. They, 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 they've been in the wilderness, and this is their last encampment spot where they pitched their tent. This, this is They're getting ready to cross over, but they've been here quite a while. My gosh, if you go and read Numbers and Deuteronomy, that, there's some stuff that happened. Their disobedience, they, they got caught up in some entanglements and, <laughs> with the Midianites. There's some stuff that happened here. But I think it's powerful because walk with me that we understand because we have foresight. We have understand that God still, despite their disobedience, my God, despite their disobedience, God still was faithful to his word and allowed them to experience the promised land. They're camped in Shintam. Some entanglements is going on, disobedience, rebellions. There's some different things going on. And they're right here. And, 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 and this is the last encampment. Hey, hey, maybe you've been in this spot just a little bit too long. And God is saying, no, this is the moment. We got to move from this spot. This is not the promise. This is the process. And this is what we're going to be talking about today. This is not the end of your chapter. You're in the process. You're, you're, you're in the middle of your story. And I know just, hey, whatever it could be that has you camp right here, this is not the end of your story. You're getting ready to turn the page. You're getting ready to cross over. You're getting ready to step into something better. But you've been sitting here just a little bit too long. You've been in this spot a little bit too long, and it's, it's time to cross over. And he tells them to go view the land. We go view the land. Isn't this interesting, family? Isn't this very interesting that Joshua sent spies to go view something that he already caught an eye for? Joshua was actually a spy. This is not new to him. Come on, can I take you back a little bit? I love the word. Because Joshua was a spy. Him and Caleb, they already went mm, to go view the land. He already, he already put his eyes 
on the very thing that God has spoken and said, I'm getting ready to go give to you. Now, years goes by and they, they're, they're close as they ever been before. And could it be my, my curiosity even went off last night when I was writing in my journal, my curiosity, did Joshua need a second look? Did, did, did Joshua need a second look at the very thing that God is getting ready to give you? Because here's the thing. I, I wrote it in my notes. Sometimes you just need a, a second look. Sometimes you need to go back to the vision board. Come on. Sometimes you need to go back to your notes and see the things that you wrote down. Sometimes I go back into my notes 10 years ago, 15 years ago, things that I wrote in my journal because I need a second look. And, and when you get a second look at the very things that God has been speaking to you, my God, it begins to be fuel you to your journey. It, it begins to be fueled to your journey. We, we're in Joshua chapter two, verse one. And, and this is the beautiful thing because family, sometimes you need to be reminded of what you're fighting for. You need to be reminded of the, of the very thing that you're fighting for because you, some, you're in the middle of the process. You're in the middle of the process, and, and Joshua sends the spies, go view the land. See, I, I, this is one thing that we're going to be touching on. Hear me when I say this. Write this down in your notes. Write down pattern. Write down pattern. And this is pattern is the, is the, is the continuation. Do this according. See, see, God told Moses to send the spies and go view the land. And they, they received the information. So now here's the pattern, because this is what pattern is. Whatever you are exposed to, you will eventually become. And now here's Joshua in the leader seat. Here's Joshua. And Joshua now repeats the very thing that he has been exposed to by his leader. His leader sent the spies. Now he's at the seat and now he's repeating the pattern. God, God already told him, hey, do as, as, as I told Moses accordingly. Now Joshua, excuse me, Joshua is here right now and he's saying the same thing. Hey, hey, go send the spies and come back. And so here, so what, what, what are you saying, PA? How does this apply to my life? My God, I believe that we have, we already have the pattern. I believe that God has uh, is already exposing you to the very things that you need to begin to walk out. And my first point is this, family, where there is no vision, there is no hope. Write that down. Where there is no vision, there is no hope. And maybe God is saying, I need you to take a second look. I need you to go send the spies and go view the land that, that I told you to go view. Maybe you need to go look at it again because maybe your hope is decreasing. Maybe your faith is decreasing and maybe you just need to go take a second look that that is still the land. Come on, somebody that flows with milk and honey. That, 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 that is still the land where I told you that there are going to be places where the water is going to be flowing, that this is still the place that I'm going to give you. It's still there. It's still breathing. It's still living. It's not dead. I'm speaking to your life right now. I'm speaking to your health right now. Come on, somebody. I'm, I'm speaking to your mind right now. Your mind is not dead. Go view the report, and the report will say that you are a living soul. Come on. The report will say that you are overcomer. I'm speaking. Maybe you just need to take a second look. Don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on this year. Don't give up on that business. Don't give up on that relationship because God is saying, go view the land. And when you review, when you view the land and you come back, you're going to see that I told you what I told you. It's still there, but it's time to cross over. Go view the land. Where there is no vision, there is no Hope. Vision gives you hope. Vision gives vision gives the people close to you hope. Let me say that again. I want you to catch this because I, I want you to walk with me. Vision gives you hope. Vision also gives the people close to you hope. Here's this is what I mean. 
Joshua already went and viewed the land. Come on, him and Caleb, we celebrate them. We preach them all the time. Don't be like those other spies. Be like Joshua and Caleb. So Joshua already has the hope. He's ready to go. He's the warrior. He's the chosen one that's getting ready to lead them over. But maybe they needed a second look because the people needed it to be reminded. And here's what I'm saying. Sometimes we got to bring the people that's around them and begin to show them, my God, our God is still worthy. Our God is still going. See, when we don't have no vision, our hope begins to be deferred. This is why you can never stop releasing, releasing vision over your life. This is why you can never stop casting vision over your life. Vision at the top of the year, we're all in our vision board and we're all got our drawing board and we're all in our journal. But here's my, here's my challenge to you to always be releasing vision even in March, in June, July, September, December. Never step away from vision because vision reminds you of what you're fighting for. You know you're not fighting for something small. You know you're not fighting for something that doesn't have an impact. If your vision does not scare you, could that be an insult to God? I'm just telling you right now that you got to start dreaming bigger. I'm preaching to myself right now that, your, that God is saying that's breadcrumbs. You can come up a little bit higher, dream a little bit more. Do you think I'm that small? Do you not think I can do that? I'm the creator. I'm the one that spoke my God and light had to be released. I'm the thing that's, I'm the one that spoke and darkness had to flee. Do you not know who I am? I am the king of glory. And God is saying, I need you to dream in this year, not next year, not 2027, not 2028. No, God is saying in this year, because it's going to be you. I'm speaking to you. Dream higher. My God, can I say it again? Does your dreams in Sought God. God is saying, no, I, I need you to dream because I have so much for you and your family. Do you trust me or are you standing still because you don't trust, you don't fully trust that I can do it? God is saying, trust me and begin to move because maybe Israel needed to hear it again. See, 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 hearing it again. It increases your faith. See, this is why we love Habakkuk. It says, make the vision plain. Come on. Get your journal on. Make the vision plain so that, can, can, I, can I make it personal so that you can run? My friend, this is, this is the year where you're getting ready to run like you have never ran before. Make the vision so clear so that, that simple, so that, that, that you can run. I, I believe I'm prophetically speaking over your life right now that your that your limbs are getting stronger in the spirit because you're getting ready to run and maybe you've been limping and maybe you haven't even been running. You just feel like you've been in a season, my God, of just being, the car is parked and God is saying, no, 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 Anthony, it's time to shift the gears. It's time to go from first gear. It's time to go to second gear. It, it's time to write the vision because there are people around you that are depending on you because they need to see it so that their hope can be increased so that they can run so that you can run and this is the year where you're getting ready to run with the with the wind of God's the wind from God on your back is blowing you in that direction. Don't be the restriction that's in your life. Get out of the way and allow God to do what God wants to do. He's blowing you in that direction. He's blowing creativity in your vision, in, in your life. He's blowing strength, new strength. I see eagles right now. Come on, it's time to fly like you have never flown before, but you got to write the vision. You got to catch division. You got to spend time in his presence to fully catch what God wants to do. See, Joshua, Moses spent time to, to get the instructions on how to catch the vision. See, this is what the powerfulness of the next 21 days, don't quit. Because I believe this family, that God is going to show you some specific details. These specific details is going to lead to your obedience and the, your obedience is going to lead to the design 
and you're getting ready to experience something that you have never experienced before. This is why we got to consecrate ourselves, because the word teaches us this family that my people perish because of lack of vision. My God, what is what has been perishing in my life because I'm still not applying vision to it? My people perish because of lack of vision. So God, what 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 am I not? What what's what's what am I missing, God, when it comes to vision? A am I not doing? Am I not writing? Am, 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 am I not connecting with the right people? Am I not being intentional with sitting with you, the most high, and receiving the revelation that I need? Am I not patient enough? What, what's the vision? I, I don't know what it could be in your life. But I do know when vision happens, vision, vision increases things. Vision pushes things. Vision gives you the fuel to run like you never have you have never ran before. See, this is a good place to revisit some things, family, because this is a pattern right here. It's a pattern right here. And he goes and he, he, he sends the spies. Write this down. This is my second point. My first point was this, where there is no vision, there is no hope. We, 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 we won scripture in. Go view the land. And my, my second point is this. My second point is this. Watch, watch this. It says, hold the vision, trust the process. Hold the vision, don't let go. Hold the vision, trust the process. Hold the vision. Trust the process. See, see, God wants you to be excited about the destiny so that you can endure the process. That's it. See, see, we get excited and God said, hey, go view the land and I'm showing you everything and I'm showing you everything for a reason. Oh my God, I, I, I'm showing you that this is the land. I'm showing you that you're going to be successful in this year. I'm, I'm going to show you, I'm going to give you glimpses of it, but it's not just so that you can see it. It's so that you can endure the process. Okay, walk with me. Here's what I mean. Maybe God had to show them because, hey, there's going to, a day is going to come and you're going to be walking around Jericho and you're going to be tired. You're going to be on day three. You're going to be on day four and you're going to be tired. You're going to be weary. It's not going to make any sense. Why does God have us walking around this, walking around this wall, this plan? Mm, doesn't make any sense, God. Well, like I don't understand it. And sometimes God will give you plans that don't make and don't make any sense. It doesn't line up to man's logic. And and you're walking around and you're frustrated. Come on, somebody, you're you're confused and you just doesn't. It don't make any sense, God. And and you and here's what happens. Here's what vision does. Vision reminds you of what you're fighting for. Could it be that? Maybe on day five when it wasn't lining up and it wasn't making any sense that Joshua had enough vision inside him to continue to walk around a wall and continue to be obedient to a plan that does not make any sense. Has, has God have ever given you any plans that doesn't make any sense? But if you have enough vision, my God, you can trust the process because you understand what you're fighting for. You understand that God is in control. You understand that God has the information and the revelation that's getting ready to transform you into the very thing that you're getting ready to possess. Now, God is saying, continue to walk. Trust me around this wall so that you can endure the process so that you can go possess the very thing that I'm teaching you and, and pushing you to possess. See, if you don't have vision of the process, the process could very, it, it could easily become very discouraging for you. Man, going through this fast <laughs> can easily become very discouraging for you. Because hey, you, but you, 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 you don't quit because you have vision. You don't quit because you because God spoke. You don't quit because you understand that that lining up under his presence is the very thing that I need. See, sometimes the process may not make sense. Sometimes the process can be hard. Sometimes the process can be very just 
disgruntling. Like it, it, the process comes. Nobody really enjoys the process. We just love the end factor. But you can endure the process a little bit better if you if we hold the vision. Please don't let go of the vision. Go view the land. Hear me today. That's my prayer for you. That today will be a day where you will revisit the land. There's peace in that land. There's joy in that land. There's a level, come on, walk with me. There's a level of obedience that needs to happen in that land. In order to fully possess it, we have to make sure that we're hearing God properly. See, see, this is the beauty. This is the beauty of what you're getting ready to possess in this year, in this season. Come on, celebration. Even for celebration, I, I believe we're we're going up a little bit higher because God wants to show us a little bit more. That, that God want, want, wants to teach us that, hey, that there's, there's a past season that's gone, and I have a new season that's, that you're getting ready to step into. Could it be that what, jo what Joshua received from Moses was his him being exposed to something led to him actually helping to conquer Jericho, the promised land, the rest of the land. Here's what I'm saying. Like, what, what, what are you saying? What, 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 what are you saying, Pastor Anthony? Here's what I'm saying. I believe this with my whole heart. That whatever, I said earlier, whatever we expose ourselves to, we will eventually become. I got so okay. Here's the application. Here's the question. In this season, in this month, what can you expose yourself to? Can you expose yourself to greatness? Can you expose yourself maybe as a mentor? Can you expose yourself to getting outside something that's uncomfortable for you? Because here, here does my friend, nothing grows inside of your comfortable space. God sometimes has to push you outside of your uncomfortable, I mean, comfortable space and get you very uncomfortable so that he can stretch you, so that he can grow you. I, I, Joshua was right there with Moses when Moses went up the mountain. Joshua was, was right there during the, during the war. Joshua was right there by the time of Joshua. Joshua was exposed to some things because there was a season to come. And I believe that God is preparing you for a season, but the preparation comes through expose, exposure. God can, can I say it this way? God can still hide you in a season and he can still expose you to things while he's, while he's hiding you. But it's our intentionality that we play a role of making sure that we are exposed to certain things. So I believe that's something that you can you can begin to write down. I believe that's something that you can begin to write down of saying, OK, God, what what what, what I can expose myself to this. You know what? My my family is going through some stuff, but, you know, what? I can expose myself to more prayer. I can expose myself to counseling. I can expose myself, come on, finance. You know what, God? I'm, this year, I'm going to get a finance coach. Somebody going to help me, help me store this money better. <laughs> I believe this is also practical. They were able to possess the land because they had vision, because they had a strategy, and they understood the purpose. And that's what I'm speaking to over your life right now. For our time this morning, this is what I'm speaking to because before the promise, and this is where I'm going to camp out and we'll begin to pray, because before the promise comes a process. Before the promise comes a process. And everything that's happening in your process right now is part of your story. And the more that we learn to endure the story that God is writing right now, we may not love certain chapters, but hey, please understand this. You end in the end. You always win. When you're his prized possession, you always 
win. So as I recap a little bit, hopefully you're taking notes. Hopefully this is sitting in your spirit. Come on, Joshua 2.1. We got one verse this morning. He sent the spies, but there is no vision. There is no hope. Hold the vision. Trust the process. Amen. Amen. Amen.